When scientists planned and designed the Hubble Space Telescope, the most groundbreaking astronomical observatory of its era, there were many things about the universe they didn't know. One of these unknowns was that stars and galaxies existed already a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. But even if they had known about these early stars and galaxies, they didn't have the technology to make Hubble see them. It became obvious that another, even grander, space observatory will be needed to get to those early stars and galaxies. So the technology that eventually enabled this observatory is now known as the James Webb Space Telescope and one of its most important tasks would be to study our neighboring planet Jupiter using its unparalleled infrared capabilities. So, what is James Webb going to observe inside Jupiter? And what has been discovered until now? Join us today as we are going to talk about how James Webb Telescope is going to shed new light at the secrets hidden inside Jupiter. And let's get started. Jupiter, named for the king of the ancient Roman gods, commands its own mini version of our solar system of circling satellites, and if we look back in time a little, their movements convinced Galileo Galilei that Earth is not the center of the universe in the early 17th century. Now, more than 400 years later, astronomers will use NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to observe these famous subjects, pushing the observatory's instruments to their fullest capabilities and laying the groundwork for far-reaching scientific discovery. To carry out this mission, a diverse team of more than 40 researchers, led by astronomers and Ked Pater of the University of California, Berkeley and Thierry Fauci of the Observatoire de Paris, have designed an ambitious observing program that will conduct some of the web's first scientific observations in the solar system, studying Jupiter, its ring system, and two of its moons, Ganon and Io. It will be a really challenging experiment, said Pater. Jupiter is so bright, and Webb's instruments are so sensitive, that observing both the bright planet and its fainter rings and moons will be an excellent test of how to get the most out of Webb's innovative technology. So, we know that the very first thing James Webb needs to do is calibrate its instruments. But in addition to calibrating Webb's instruments for Jupiter's brightness, astronomers must also take into account the planet's rotation, because Jupiter completes one day in only 10 hours. Therefore, several images must be stitched together in a mosaic to fully capture a certain area the famous storm known as the Great Red Spot. For example, this task is way more difficult when the object itself is moving. So, while many telescopes have studied Jupiter and its storms, Webb's large mirror and powerful instruments will provide new insights. We know that the immediate atmosphere above the Great Red Spot is colder than other areas of Jupiter, but at higher altitudes in the mesosphere, the atmosphere appears to be warmer. We will use Webb to investigate this phenomenon, Depater said. In addition, Webb will also examine the atmosphere of the polar region, where NASA's Juno spacecraft discovered clusters of cyclones. Webb's spectroscopic data will provide much more detail than has been possible in past observations, measuring winds, cloud particles, gas composition, and temperature. Furthermore, future solar system observations of the giant planets with Webb will benefit from the lessons learned in these early observations of the Jovian system. Therefore, the team is tasked with developing methods for working with web observations of solar system planets, which can be used later by other scientists. But what is so special about this planet? Well, one thing we know is that it is the most favored planet of the children, obviously because of its rings. So the rings certainly add a little value to it. However, all four of the gas giant planets of the solar system have rings, with Saturn's being the most prominent. On the other hand, Jupiter's ring system is composed of three parts a flat main ring, a halo inside the main ring, shaped like a double convex lens, and the gossamer ring, exterior to the main ring. Jupiter's ring system is exceptionally faint because the particles that make up the rings are so small and sparse that they do not reflect much light. Next to the brightness of the planet, they practically disappear, presenting a challenge for astronomers. We are really pushing the capabilities of some of Webb's instruments to the limit to get a unique new set of observations said co-investigator Michael Wung of the University of California, Berkeley. So the team will test observing strategies to deal with Jupiter's scattered light and build models for use by other astronomers, including those studying exoplanets orbiting bright stars. In addition, the team will also look to make new discoveries in the rings as well. The painter noted that there may be undiscovered ephemeral moonlets in the dynamic ring system and potential ripples in the ring from comet impacts like those observed and traced back to the impact of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 in 1994. Now, let's talk about its icy moon Ganon that the James Webb will observe. 
Several features of icy Ganond make it fascinating for astronomers. Aside from being the largest moon in the solar system, and larger even than the planet Mercury, it is the only moon known to have its own magnetic field. The team will investigate the very outer parts of Ganon's atmosphere, its exosphere, to better understand the moon's interaction with particles in Jupiter's magnetic field. There is also evidence that Ganon may have a liquid saltwater ocean beneath its thick surface ice, which Webb will investigate with detailed spectroscopic study of surface salts and other compounds. The team's experience studying Ganon's surface may be useful in the future study of other icy solar system, moons suspected of having subsurface oceans, including Saturn's moon Enceladus and fellow Jovian satellite Europa. In dramatic contrast to Ganon is the other moon the team will study which is called Io, the most volcanically active world in the solar system. The dynamic surface is covered with hundreds of huge volcanoes that would dwarf those on Earth, as well as lakes of molten lava and smooth floodplains of solidified lava. Astronomers plan to use Webb to learn more about the effects of Io's volcanoes on its atmosphere. There is still much we don't know about Io's atmospheric temperature structure, because we haven't had the data to distinguish the temperature at different altitudes," said the Pater. On Earth, we take for granted that as you hike up a mountain, the air gets cooler. Would it be the same on Io? Right now, we don't know, but Webb may help us to find out. In addition, Another mystery Webb will investigate on Io is the existence of stealth volcanoes, which emit plumes of gas without the light reflecting dust that can be detected by spacecraft like NASA's Voyager and Galileo missions, and so have thus far gone undetected. Webb's high spatial resolution will be able to isolate individual volcanoes that previously would have appeared as one large hotspot, allowing astronomers to gather detailed data on Io's geology. Furthermore, Webb will also provide unprecedented data on the temperature of Eos hotspots and determine if they are closer to volcanism on Earth today, or if they have a much higher temperature, similar to the environment on Earth in the early years after its formation. Previous observations by the Galileo mission and ground observatories have hinted at these high temperatures. Webb will follow up on that research and provide new evidence that may settle the question. So, Webb's detailed observations will not supplant those of other observatories, but rather coordinate with them," Wong explained. Webb's spectroscopic observations will cover just a small area of the planet, so global views from ground-based observatories can show how the detailed Webb data fit in with what's happening on a larger scale, similar to how Hubble and the Gemini Observatory provide context for Juno's narrow, close-up observations. In turn, Webb's study of Jupiter's storms and atmosphere will complement Juno's data, including radio signals from lightning, which Webb does not detect. No one observatory or spacecraft can do it all, Wang said. So we are very excited about combining data from multiple observatories to tell us much more than we could learn from only a single source. This research is being conducted as part of a Webb Early Release Science ERS, program. This program provides time to selected projects early in the observatory's mission allowing researchers to quickly learn how best to use Webb's capabilities, while also yielding robust science. The James Webb Space Telescope has already earned the status of world's premier space science observatory, and it will help solve mysteries in our solar system, look beyond to distant worlds around other stars, and probe the mysterious structures and origins of our universe and our place in it. And this is all for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.